What is up guys, Maccabee Speed coming at you. Great follow-up episode from yesterday's upload that you guys liked so much. The analytics just don't lie, and close to a thousand views in a 24-hour period speaks for itself, guys. Follow-up episode for you, hats on blitz, full auto hunting comparison in 25 and 30 caliber against the pork ribs we tested yesterday. Let's get right into it. Fire ring. I almost killed my GoPro. All right, gentlemen, as a guy who pretty much is a, uh, a bench shooter only and not doing too terribly much full auto offhand, completely unprepared for the climb there. We're gonna go ahead and use a more stable shooting position and get a secondary magazine, hopefully to hit our target this time. And firing. Failure to feed. Fill your feet. Fill your feet. And firing. Fill your feet. All right guys, a little bit of a magazine hang up, but all in all, absolutely what we wanted to see. Let's move right onto the 30 caliber and see what happens. And firing. And firing. All right guys, and just like the 25 caliber, I just wasn't quite ready for it. Got that climb effect again. Let's go ahead and dump a secondary magazine onto that meat target and really see what happens. And firing. Way better that time. Way better, more happy with that by far. Way better that time. Way better. More happy with that by far. All right, gentlemen, as you saw, I am not the most stable at holding a full auto rifle offhand. And we got the climb effect, not only on the 25 caliber, but also over here on the 30 caliber. You can see a few of them went wide right there. But by the same token, we were able to reset ourselves, reload a magazine, and get a full magazine on the 25 caliber and a full magazine on the 30 caliber target as well. Let's go ahead and grab our Smith & Wesson MMP and delve right into the results. Look at those clean holes punched right through the bone, boys. Once again, boys, just nothing but lead fragments and splinters of bone on this rack of ribs. We are showcasing the impact that we came to make today, and I am very pleased with the results. You can also see exactly how much energy is physically left by how much we were able to transfer to our quote unquote internal organs of our game animal. Nice little pass through here, but definitely my accuracy suffers and it did affect our test a little bit. Although I think we can see what the gist of the results are. 
One thing to note guys, even though I made the best attempt I possibly could to go ahead and get the majority of the rounds to pass through both racks of ribs, it does look like I did go wide right once again. There's a lot of variables when you're doing a test like this, so I tried to do it the best way that I could, but ultimately we get what we get in this case. Looks like we were able to pull a pellet out of the sheetrock also. Almost all the energy is ending up in these targets, guys. Now there's a lot more trauma with the 30 caliber. When you have that larger frontal area of the 30 caliber round versus the 25 caliber, you just end up with these nastier penetrations. I mean, you see that bone, that's, that's literally marrow being pushed out of the bone on impact, guys. Definitely some energy transfer there for sure. Same type of a scenario that you're seeing here. Once again, hitting the bone, passing all the way through, and turn it into those ugly splinters that just definitely dictate a clean kill in the hunting environment. We've almost cut our bag of oranges in half here. Ooh, look at that. That's some impressive information, guys. Look at that. Hit a second rib, it's stopping where it sits. Let's dig that out of there. right up against a rib and flattened out like a hollow point even though it's a domed pellet. Only energy will take a pellet like this and flatten it out this way guys. 50 foot pounds is nothing to sneeze at and the 30 caliber blitz is putting it down in spades. Now look at this gentlemen. I am a fan of depositing energy where it is supposed to go and not over penetrating and continuing to have that round travel down range. Based on the fact that this is only half inch sheetrock and these rounds did not penetrate through that very easy to punch through target, we can see that almost all of the energy was dumped into the target it was meant to and the round would not have carried too terribly much further down range. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed watching that episode as much as I enjoyed filming that episode for you guys. I always enjoy getting the opportunity to make it out to the longer, unrestricted, more wide open spaces where the full auto capability of the Hats on Blitz truly shines guys. The 25 and the 30 caliber proved incredibly effective and huge smiles per gallon on both platforms as far as the full auto capability is concerned. Now we did see my own poor skill set. That climb absolutely got away from me, but instead of editing it out like a YouTuber, I felt like the genuineness of the channel needed to shine through and you guys deserve to see this segment. I'm sure the comment section is going to educate me fairly quickly as far as whether or not full auto is actually legal to go ahead and use in a hunting scenario. I haven't done my research personally. Having said that, I'm not really advocating for it to be used as a fully automatic rifle when it's used in a hunting environment. This video was more made as a fun video for you guys to see what would happen if that eventuality were to ever play out. All right, guys, I think that's a great place to end the video, but if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. You wanna see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more with that notifications button so you can stay current on the channel as well as when new videos come out. If you've really liked this video, make sure you share it so somebody else can see it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.